When do you refer a patient for hospice care? Well, at the end, uh, at, when the patient is in the last six months of the disease. What's going to help you decide when that is? These factors are associated with shorter survival. Male gender, which as every man knows is associated with shorter survival, no matter what disease you have or none at all. Uh, older patients tend to progress faster than younger ones. Patients with other diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, CHF, COPD, cancer, uh, virtually any serious disease will mean that the dementia is going to progress quicker than in a healthy patient. Troubling signs to look for, recent incontinence, weight loss, repeated episodes of dehydration, fever, pressure ulcers, seizure disorder, uh, symptoms such as shortness of breath, dysphagia, poor oral intake, loss of weight, and low body mass index are all associated with shorter survival. The National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization recommends referring patients for hospice treatment when they reach stage 7A on the FAST scale. Set stage 7A means uh, someone who can only speak about six words intelligibly, can't communicate beyond that, and has some other comorbidities such as aspiration or aspiration pneumonia, repeated urinary tract infections, sepsis, uh, multiple stage 3 or 4 decubitus ulcers, persistent fever, and weight loss of about 10% or more in 6 months. These are all complications that are associated with being bed bound. That's when people start to aspirate <clears throat> and get sores and get infections. Uh, remember that this is not strictly a medical issue. There are many issues facing the family, uh, such as legal issues trying to get a living will prepared while the patient can still be their own spokesperson. Durable power of attorney, so you can use the patient's funds to provide what care they need, such as a nursing home bed. Guardianship, which luckily in Delaware is not usually necessary. If the patient names a family member as power of attorney, or even if they don't but have first degree relatives, our state laws are pretty good as far as letting patients spend or letting families use the patient's money appropriately. However, if a patient doesn't have any family and didn't write a living will and designate somebody's power of attorney, you may need to pursue guardianship, which is never an easy thing to do. The New England Journal, journal of Medicine in 2009 uh, published a very good research article on dementia. Uh, going through choices, attitudes, strategies for care of advanced dementia at the end of life, called the Cascade Study. It was funded by the NIH, and it followed 323 residents with advanced dementia in 22 Boston area nursing homes for a year and a half. The lead author, Susan Mitchell, concluded, dementia is a terminal illness. Now that may seem obvious to most of us in the medical community, however, when I speak about Alzheimer's disease and dementia in public libraries, which I do over a wide geographic area, jaws drop when I call Alzheimer's disease a terminal, a terminal disease. People look at me like, you don't die because you forget where you put your car keys. No, but you do die when your dementia becomes so severe that you're bed bound and then all the complications that we mentioned earlier from being bed bound ensue, such as decubitus ulcers, repeated UTIs and sepsis. There are several complications associated with high six-month mortality rates, and they are good indicators for hospice referral. Pneumonia, febrile episodes, and eating problems are the top three. Thank you very much.